before coming here, I watched a lot of your interviews, and there's one word that you repeat every time, the journey. And I wanted to ask you about this because you talk a lot about the process and the journey. Yeah. How was the journey for Coach Itudis? First of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, I'm always uh, motivated and driven and um, highly, let's say, highly motivated, I can say, when I can share knowledge with, uh, with people that they like basketball. We share the same, let's say, love and desire um, to develop this game of basketball, which is so excited. In, in your certain question and um, directly answer, what is the journey? The journey is um, of this. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't like to recall what, what was happening, how I came to that uh, position, because if I start remember all this, uh, bring back memories, it's pretty much close to my retirement. So I, I, I still have a fire. I still uh, believe that something I miss out there. So I need to find it out. Uh, when I say I miss, I miss some kind of a knowledge, some kind of experience, some kind of, a, you know, a play, a, a defensive strategy, a, a better, a better um, um, coaching abilities. I don't know. Something is out there for sure. And, uh, you know, life is um, as an open library. Uh, and you just go and pick up books. Uh, you just gave me a good... Uh, note uh, about how I can protect my office better. So that's, you see, that's another tip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I could help with this one. Coach, uh, when you talk about fire, I wanted to ask you this question at the end, but when you talk about fire, I know that you're still learning. Obviously, every game you learn something new from managing different characters, different egos in your team, especially now that you have a different team from CSKA. But at this age and with all the experience and your portfolio of coaching teams, do you still feel that your tank is full of motivation? I don't know if you watched yesterday's game between Djokovic and yes, your, your, your fellow Greek player in the finals where Djokovic won Tsitsipas. his Tsitsipas, when Djokovic won his 22nd uh, Grand Slam. And the woman after the game, she asked Djokovic, how can you at 35 still be motivated to beat those young guys at 25? And he, and he said, what do you mean young guys? I'm still young. 35 is the new 25. So. Yes. Seeing you on the court, because we were watching the game, uh, the Turkish game, two days ago, three days ago, and seeing, seeing you on the court, you're still fully motivated. How hard is it for someone like you, who's won EuroLeague many times, who's won uh, a lot of leagues around the world with CSKA, with uh, Panathiakos, with all these teams, to stay motivated and finding new challenges? Well, I, it's, it's not hard, actually. It goes with the job. I don't know. I can I'm talking for myself, am I right? So... If you're not motivated and if you're not motivated enough to wake up in the morning and wait until this moment comes where I'm going to meet my players, my assistant coaches, we're going to have and I can, an hour or two hours before the meeting uh, confrontation, uh, exchanging ideas, uh, trying to get out there with um, uh, the best possible uh, strategy to face any certain opponent, then why the hell I'm doing this? You know, I, I'm... I'm waking up and I'm I'm full. My tank is still full. I I have a fire o on me. I like what I'm doing. Um, I like what I'm doing with all the other collaborators and associates around me. First of all, working with these players, working with a new club. This is a new journey in front of us. This is a process. It's not an easy process for sure. Uh, teams had not been built just overnight. You need to get some certain punches. Um, you need to fall seven times, but eight times you got to stand up and continue. Uh, you need to face adversities and get every adversity and every fall or every disappointment as, um, as a great, um, actually, motivation for the next uh, one to come because, uh, you know, we've been all the time awarded in closed doors uh, what, for what we're doing in closed doors, we've been awarded in front of um, audience because we won a game, because we won a trophy, as you said. But uh, this is all about efforts in closed doors uh, that the players are putting out there. My associates, uh, they're working in hours of video. Myself, that I'm closed and I, I don't have, let's say, certain nights that I can spend with my friends or my family. 
and I, I, I watch video instead. So still I have that fire. I, I want to be well prepared. Uh, I have very uh, young coaches, well motivated to reach the top. I was one of them, let's say 20 years ago. Um, and I understand that, you know, in, in every job, in your job, in my job, if you go, go just to lay down and be satisfied with what you have accomplished, then somebody else that uh, is more driven, uh, more young, let's say, has more in his tank is going to go by you. I mean, it's it's normal. That's the, the, the nature of life. So you mentioned Djokovic and, um, and Stefanos Tsitsipas. Uh, I'm happy that I met uh, Djokovic. Like in a couple of times, we have we shared, let's say, a glass of wine and uh, and 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 we talk a lot. I haven't met in person Stefanos, but what what a, a a great message they gave after the the final, both of them. When when Stefanos says to Fornole, what means for him as an individual and as a tennis player. Watching Novak Djokovic playing all these years, winning, uh, and make him get the best out of himself. That's what pretty much in, in small words, uh, in, 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 in a short version, Stefano says. And then Djokovic, what he says is like answering to, uh, to, to the compliments and actually to the, the truth that Stefano's put out there. He says, we're coming from a small countries, Serbia and Greece, they never had, have had big tennis players, but he actually gave a, a huge message to the young people, to the young generation. Don't stop dreaming. Follow your dreams. Obviously, you need to hard, to uh, be uh, to, to 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 work hard, but don't let anybody to stop your by dreaming and 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 visualizing something that you want to achieve. So no matter where you're coming from. Have a have a dream, support it with uh, knowledge, support it with uh, work ethic, and you might become the next Stefanos or the next Tsitsipas or the next, you know, Nick Kalathis or the next Kari Wolbeck, you know, or the next Meli Mahmutoglu or the next wh whatever player is. When you talk about following your dreams, I want to take you back a little bit to the 80s, the late 80s. I've heard one of your interviews, you we were saying that there was no internet in the late 80s and yes. you wanted to follow your basketball dreams. So you just picked up the phone, found out where the best college is and you went to Yugoslavia back then. Back then, yeah. I think your dad, I'm, uh, I'm not sure about this information, but your dad wanted you, you to do agriculture or something yes. else. Yes. Because you're saying this is the advice that Djokovic and Tsitsipas were giving to young kids. What would your advice be to young kids, especially in the Arab countries where there's still restrictions when it comes to sports and to following your dreams because parents have, have a big influence over their kids? What would your advice be that it's okay if whatever your parents want, to, want you to do, that's their issue, just follow your dreams no matter how hard you think it is? Well, I'm a parent too. And um, I remember my, my dad used to be a good soccer player. And... Um, and also, he's a very good. Still, he's very good uh, uh, bouzouki player. Mm -hmm. His 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 instrument is bouzouki. So I grew up in music, and music is a very important uh, part in my life. Uh, I believe a person that doesn't like music is he misses something significant in life. Um, he never stopped me of following my dream, although it was like very extreme. What I was asking to go to Yugoslavia back then and study in the best university in Europe in Zagreb, still he is among the one or two best universities. Uh, I'm glad that he supported this dream because he had financially to support me as well. Let's don't forget that for a small village, my Trikala in Mathias, where I grew up, I had to go to move over there, you know, leave and rent an apartment and, and, and pay the, the university and everything. So the scholarship, uh, obviously it, it's um, rewarded after that when we make these conversations with, with, with him. He never stood uh, as, an, an, as an obstacle in front of me, but he just had the dream of, since he was um, working in a dynamic, uh, let's put it this way, um, agriculture uh, product, which was the asparagus, uh, he wanted me to be the representative in Germany uh, and um, you know be their man inside the, the whole this process. But I didn't see my I didn't see myself into that. 
pretty much, you know, I have a huge respect to asparagus. I, I, whatever I see asparagus, I'm eating for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm ordering uh, because I, 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 I started because of, of that product and because of the, of course, the, the sweat and the, and the blood that my parents put on the, on working daily basis. Um, but I, I was seeing myself in, in, in this, I wanted, I wanted to teach basketball. I wanted to be a coach. I wanted to become a coach. And, uh, uh one of my first, and after that, great friends and a teacher was uh, Dushan late past uh, Dushan Ivkovic. Unfortunately, he, he left from that life, but still his, you know, his presence is so life in, 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 in to my daily, let's say, um, thoughts and uh, understanding of how basketball can be and teaching and coaching is so, so important. Um, you know, you may lead a group of people of journalists, you may lead a group of uh, bankers, you may lead a group of uh, soldiers, you may, you know, like, uh, we all at the end uh, need to lead by example. And, um, you know, back then, uh, Dushan, back in 89, when I used to be a student, I met him and from there started a great relationship and he influenced, actually, he is the one that we have met with Jelko, but um, he was the one that, you know, enforce, if I may say, the um, marriage, uh, the professional marriage, of, obviously, uh, between me and, and, and Jelko in Panathinaikos for 13 years. And, um, you know, I was very motivated to learn, uh, like, a, uh, like um, you know, spouse that, that collects uh, knowledge from each and everything what happened. Uh, try to absorb uh, knowledge uh, from books, from daily basis uh, experience. Uh, I kind of decided very early. So, if that a message to Arab countries, to Arab to 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 the kids that they have to follow the dream, it was not easy for me. I was coming from a small village. Uh, the potential was limited. But it's like a karma. You call it karma. You call it like I was sleeping and waking up with the same idea how I'm going to become something significant in this sport that I love and I like, how I can learn that sport even more, how I can learn from the best, how I can uh, learn from every moment. And I kind of decide that playing basketball, I used to play. Uh, I was not the best at. I could go in a second league or go in an A2 division, but that was not my dream. My dream was uh, teaching. And I found the best friends that still they are my friends. As I said, I mentioned Duda, Rzelko, or Igor. They were very good friends, and I, I learned so many things from them. So, But to be clear, in order to give a certain advice to the kids that live in Arab countries, I need to witness these restrictions. I can't talk. Now I'm here in Turkey, in my office, and you talk about the restrictions. So, you know, probably you as a young generation, you need to start this kind of, let's let's call it um, evolution. Revolution, maybe. I would not call it a revolution, but evolution in terms of uh, uh, being evolved within uh, the system that says to you, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. Parents cannot do that. Cannot do that. I would I would advise first the parents to sit down and talk with their kids and and listen what they say. And, you know, lots of times the kids are, uh, that they are able to follow their guts and, uh, and their instinct, at the end, they're, they're survivors. So that's my advice towards the parents uh, regarding the kids. Um, they need each and every day to prove why they want to, and especially probably the, the kids that they're living in Arab countries, that why they want this, what they want to. That's a great advice, coach. You were talking about the unofficial marriage of you and Coach Obradovich. You stayed together for 13 years almost as an assistant coach. I wanted to know if your dream from the first day you were an assistant coach was always to become a coach later on or were you happy to be an assistant coach? And then you noticed that, no, maybe I could become a coach one day. Well, it didn't happen like that because when I went to Panathinaikos in uh, June 1999, I was already a head coach in Pauk oh, okay. uh, in 94-95. Coach Peja Stojakovic, Bane Prelevic, uh, Dean Garrett, uh, Lawrence Vandenberg, you know, Buduris, um, uh, Redzias, and those great players. Um, I became the interim head coach because the first coach was fired. So I end the season as a, the youngest head coach at the age of 25. 
And um, then I, I experienced two uh, uh, full years of coaching A2 division, Ment and Filipos. So I was going over there as a head coach, okay. having the experience of three years being as a head coach, not at that level, uh, lower level, but still uh, I had my certain ideas, which we managed to marriage as well in this professional marriage, as you said. So Jelko, if something he ha had is was that he gave me the opportunity to e explore and e expand my knowledge with uh, high quality players, such as Bodiroga or Odette Katash or, uh, or Johnny Rogers or Jelko Rebracha or Francesco Salvertis or Diamantidis after that, Spanulis, etc., etc. So I was um, equal um, uh, collaborator with, with, with Jelko and I was not the yes man. I, I, I had my certain philosophy, which we managed. Of course, he was the one. Of course, he was the general. Of course, he was the, the head coach. But he... Uh, wanted to get the best out of us, of all of us that we were working over there. And when I analyze, I don't know, 13 games of some opponent, obviously I know that opponent very well. So I got to go with a certain ideas, knowing our plus and minuses, and also knowing the plus and minuses of the opponent to build the, the best uh, strategy. So with me, it started, I was a head coach. I became an assistant coach to a great coach, but I've seen that I have um, a certain uh, areas to work and I was happy with, with that decision. It's not something that is secret. Everybody knows in Europe that while these 13 years were going, I had several good offers to become again a head coach in the EuroLeague level. The most known offer it was from Basconia or Taugres back then, Mr. Kerecheta. But I was so uh, happy and committed into what I was doing that I, I, it didn't work out at that period. And some other teams, they were coming to knock my door. I was happy, and then uh, the circle of Panathinaikos ended, I would say, very glorious and successfully. Um, I, I moved after that, if you remember, to Banvit, to a, to a club that it was not affirmated, it was not well known in Europe or so, whatever. In Just a small one year, country. right? Just My contract year. was three years. Two years, and Banvit. And not only three years, at one, 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 it was three close years. Okay. Banvit, Banvit had signed me for three Close years. Okay, but you only you've only been there for one year. Before yeah, because you Ceska went. came okay. and bought me out okay. because Bandwit allowed that. So I, I'm still thankful to the decision of uh, Oskan Kilic and uh, and brother Gorner, the owners of Bandwit. Bandwit doesn't exist right now as a club because they shut down also the, the company. But back then uh, CSK seen something to me, and also with other three clubs that they came. But I decided to go to CSK and uh, and uh, I was under contract. I, uh, there is no, there was, in my contract, there was no way out. If Bandwidth would not have given the, um, the green light, uh, I would not go in 2014 in CSK. You said something that's very important about being an assistant coach. You weren't a yes man. And I think this is very important for assistant coaches that if you're an assistant coach, you're allowed to have your own opinion also. You should be saying no to co to the coach, even though he's the general, because you're there for a reason. You're there to see things from a different angle than, than what he's seeing. Actually. Well, let's don't go to the, to the other edge. Obviously, and when I'm creating my coaching staff, when I'm given time and opportunity to choose people, I choose always um, um, assistants that they can challenge me. Uh, I'm not choosing assistant coaches that they will say over here, I had the best strategy, I'm the best coach in the world. I have So... I, I need assistant coaches that they can challenge me and coming over here with the ideas and justify their no. So yes, they can say the no, but justify why you say no. Justify why uh, this way and not that way. So I was like this, uh, having always examples that they were based into the evidence which I gained by watching games, by analyzing games, by getting into the brain of the other coach. Kind of, you know, so I like this kind of type of coaches that they will come and challenge me and say, no, coach, probably this. Why? Because of that and that reason. Coach, how has basketball evolved throughout the years from the late 80s when you were a player and then when you started your coaching career up until now with all the data, all the analytics, all the science, the training, how everything huge. has evolved? Huge involvement. Uh, huge progress into our sport. Uh, I was just talking with Costas, our strength coach, uh, with Stefanos Dedas, my assistant coach. We, In one trip, we wanted to watch one game that I coached back then in 1995, 96. And it was like, I, I said, put it in the fast forward because it goes too slow. <laughs> you know, like it was, 
it was too slow, but back then it looked to us like, wow. And with 30 seconds shot clock. And um, obviously it goes a lot to the strength, to the ex explosivity, individual quality uh, of the player that the, um, everybody's looking out there for isolation, for a um, good layup uh, play or a good uh, spot shot play that might lead you to the free throws as well. Those are the three significant spots that each and every game uh, requires and each and every team looking for in general. That's a universal uh, uh, thing. Uh, and uh, the game had been evolved so much because players, they're, they're making certain adjustments. Uh, you see now players that they can see two, three passes ahead. Defensively, it's more physical. Um, that's obvious. So in order to survive in, into this physicality, into this uh, contact game, and the frequency of the games with all this trip, uh, the, um, the number of games we're playing, uh, the importance of the game. So in EuroLeague, every game matters. In Turkish League, it's a very competitive league. Like you have 16 teams that are, wow. You know, everybody has a right to win everybody. So it's, it's an open competition over there. It's a fair competition. So you need to be, to take care about your body, your nutrition. Uh, everybody now has, cares uh, more about also the day off. It's important to give day off to, to the players as well, to disconnect and bring them back in, in full energy. We always talk about this on this show that days off are important because it's not only about hard work, it's also about smart work. Sometimes it's good to take a step back in order to take two steps forward. And it's nice that you said that all the games that you watch from the 80s and the 90s are very slow. Like even if you look at the Olympic Games, for example, all the world records that were standing back then, there's a huge difference by, by that time. And now you see all those records being broken because, because obviously science has, has evolved, training has evolved, strength and conditioning has evolved and everything. So yes, the athletes are better. Coach, since we're talking about this, the last subject I want to talk about before HCB is the Greek national team. Obviously, you're coaching there now and you're the coach of arguably the most dominant player in the world right now, Yanis Atetekompo. How easy or hard, I don't know, I, I need your answer on this, but how good was it to experience coaching a player of this caliber? Um, a great experience, uh, still is. Yanis uh, is so to the ground. Uh, in, in other words, he's so humble, um, dedicated to what he's doing. Um, he has an, an enormous love to the sport and uh, enormous understanding of where he's coming from. He's still in this kind of a positive um let's say, uh, stress that you may have because you know that there is a stress and stress, stress that it can lead you to, to become a crazy guy or you have a positive stress that keeps you always alert, keeps you always intense so you can always work out, work out. And sometimes he's overreacting with his workout, but uh, he understands that he, and he understood that he came over here with a hard work. It was not easy in his life, on the contrary. He is a, a living example to the young generations how to follow your dream. We were talking about young generations in Arab countries and in, in, in the world, actually, what he was going through his childhood. Uh, but they were so tight as a family and he got the, um, the whole, you know, uh, path was uh, difficult. But at the same time, he had so uh, good lessons from the parents and from life uh, that made made him uh, galvanize uh, this this example galvanize his character galvanize his uh, his ego and ego in terms of I can succeed I can do it why others they doing it so let me follow my dream and uh, it was a great experience and um, I believe that Yanis as you said arguably one of the most uh, dominant players in NBA. Um, had a, haven't won something with Greek national team and he's so motivated and thrilled. Uh, and we hope that we can achieve something. I mean, we managed all together this national team last summer, even though we haven't qualified to the, to the medals. And it was something that we were, we were not happy, uh, obviously. But uh, we managed to, to bring people again out to the streets. They were watching the games. The, in one game, this game against uh, the knockout game against Czech Republic, 
there were more than six uh, million uh, viewers on the national TV watching that game in Greece. Greece is like a small country, 11. So more than half, 60% of the people that were watching the game. So that means that, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, extraordinary um, achievement for this national team. And the fact that we're going to be now second year together, the team already qualified to the world champion. Huge accomplishment, uh, considering the uh, players we missed in this qualifying round. This is another topic about talking about the windows, uh, Euroleague coach to coach also national team, windows. I think disaster. Like, Better not to get into really, it. Really, I think it's very important actually. Because I mean, it is important, but I, I don't have the answers because the answers are lying to the, to the people that they lead the sport and both sides, they love the sport. So they have to sit down and find solution. Yes, but you don't think that you coaching a club and the national team is good for you because I believe a coach is like a player. You need to be in game shape well, as well. It's, it's good. But it's not doable. Why not? Because we have the same day games. Oh, how, with Euroleague. Okay, okay. Of course. How, 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 can I, how can I coach the, the game? Yeah. Let's say now, the, I'm not going to coach the last two windows. My assistant coach is going to coach. But back then, we had a game against Vesda, Red Star. We played the game. And literally the next, the, the same evening, Greek national team sent a, paid a, a private jet for me and Kalathis to fly to Creta and to have one morning practice with five players. The first time I introduced myself. I haven't worked. How, how we can achieve a, a bonding? How we can achieve a chemistry? You're talking about this issue with FIBA. Yes, I'm talking about this issue with FIBA. Like um, the windows are nice. They need to continue, but they need to find a solution. With Euroleague, if that cannot find a solution, how the coaches can coach or the players can play. I didn't have full roster, as I said. And then in Belgium, another roster. So on Friday, we play a game. On Saturday in the morning, we had six uh, other players. Then we have another team. Then it's going to be another team. Yeah, when I was talking about this, I meant for yeah, us. Yeah, I understand. In, in the Lebanese league, we have a month off where the national team can just prepare and go for the window. That, it's different. Great. It's different. That yeah. everybody's dedicated there. But now to have two obligations here and there on this next window, Olympiakos is playing game against Valencia at the same day that Greece is playing against Serbia. So That's crazy. How... How it this should be resolved. Work. I think for because if they see it from a business point of view, I think it will be resolved. Coach, uh, before we end, obviously, uh, I don't know if have you watched the Asian Championship? You were talking now about uh, six million Greek people watching the the game. I think our path as countries are very similar because Lebanon qualified to the finals of the Asian Championship and we lost against Australia by two points. I haven't watched the, the that, game. That's a, very, that's a very nice game. So also we had record-breaking people watching on TV. It's nice how basketball in different countries brings people together and they have only one goal. This is, I think this is the, the mission and of sports eventually. So it will be nice if we can uh, also share some knowledge and um, uh, with uh, EuroLeague Head Coaches Board Association uh, we're going to come close to Arab countries. I already have a connection with many uh, people. So uh, this next um, task we have and this next collaboration we have, uh, I hope it will help more people to get into the game um, and at the same time teach in a better way, attract more young people to play basketball uh, and means that Tomorrow we might have the, the next stars, or at least if we're not going to have the next stars of basketball, we're going to have a healthy fans that they understand the uh, basics of basketball, they understand the rules of basketball, so they can be a good and healthy fans. So when you talk about EHCB, is it for everyone? Is it for coaches? Is it for even healthy fans who wants to understand the game more? Well, it's more um, made it to the specialists that they want to get into, but uh, we will not say no to the to the guys that they want to get into. And they're gonna, they are attracted by the sport and they want to, to learn more. So everybody's welcome into these clinics. Everybody's welcome to the uh, program that- uh, Step Ahead. Step Ahead has created over there. It's huge and uh, well-organized and very healthy system. So we're gonna say yes to everybody that maybe uh, from this, we're going to have the next uh, great referees. 
that they will understand how coaches are thinking, how coaches are approaching the game, and we're going to have the next uh, leading uh, referees. Maybe we're going to have, as I said, the next coaches, assistant coaches, general managers, uh, somebody that can help this sport to evolve more so basically more. it's everything it's not yes. only coaching even reporters even uh, every, everything that well, has everybody to do is with welcome over there statistics it's, everything yes every, everybody yeah it's a great collaboration uh, i want to add to that that um, you as the president of the hcb step ahead with for algiers also this collaboration is amazing for not only lebanon for the whole arab countries i think basketball is now on upwards and booming there. So hopefully with that addition and collaboration yeah. is gonna go bigger. Coach, last question for me. Uh, I wanted to ask you when, when I was coming here. For Coach Etudis, is it, is it one of your dreams to one day coach the NBA, in the NBA or you're happy in Europe? Well, I'm, I'm very uh, happy that I have friends all around. I'm very happy that I have um, experienced um, uh, a great three years uh, working in Summer League of Las Vegas with Detroit Pistons, uh, having a, a collaboration with uh, Joe Dumars and George David uh, back then for seven years with Panathinaikos, and one year with Philadelphia in Orlando. Uh, so I witnessed the Summer Leagues in, in, in different aspects, and from Orlando and Las Vegas. I have many people that they work in NBA, players, um, development coaches, assistant coaches, head coaches, uh, presidents, GMs, or so whatever. Uh, NBA is the best uh, league in the, in the world, uh, the best organized league by far. Um, but I'm very happy in Europe, and I'm very happy with this task that I have in front of me. I don't make this kind of plans. My uh, routine and my plan is just the next day, the next practice, the next the next meeting, the next game. So tomorrow we'll play a very important game. Uh, and, um, you know, if, if something happens one day, let it happen. But I, I don't think so. To be honest, it's going to be so easy for a, Euro, for a European coach to, to coach over there. It was some kind of opportunities. There are great coaches that they, they – they still coaching over there as an assistant coaches or an associate to the head coach. I had this kind of offers, but I'm very happy in Fenerbahce. This is a huge prospect we have all together over here. We want to uh, see where, where we can go. We want to create something that, for instance, our next opponent, Olympiakos, created in the last three years. This bond, this kind of core of uh, local and foreign players that they play for the team. You know, the fans are also is a, an important um, an important fact in this uh, whole story. We want to have our fans with, uh, on our side. And let's don't forget Fenerbahce has more than 30 million fans. So that's that's huge. So our our performance influences people. Our, our performance um, make, make happy or sad million of people. So this is a huge, um, I, I would say, uh, obligation we have. It's not a burden. It's an obligation at the same time. You, you need to feel blessed that you are in such a club. And, you know, uh, that's what it is. Like, whatever future after that brings, who knows? Let's stay healthy. That's the most, and, and have peace. You remind me of something. In a lot of interviews, you also talk about falling forward. Like, oh, yeah. how, that's how you handle losses and failures. Sometimes, as long as you fall forward, not backward. What exactly do you mean about falling forward? Well, falling forward means that you don't fall back. I said to you, like, in life, you're going to fall seven times, and eight times you got to uh, stand up and, uh, and chase your dream. It's, it's inevitable and undoubtedly me and you are going to fall. We, we're going to fall in life because in relationship we're going to be disappointed. In friendship we're going to be disappointed. In marriage we're going to be disappointed. In uh, loving affair we're going to be disappointed. In profession we're going to be disappointed. We're, or we're going we're gonna to have a failures. We're not going to succeed. All the time. This is this is this is inevitable. That's that's something that goes with life. So it's how you're gonna approach this failure and say, okay, yes, it's not gonna be easy. The path is gonna be hard, but I'm here because I have a great coaching staff to hard this hardship to share it. You know, to to go all together and when you're gonna share this hardship and uh, and. Uh, Find the solution together. Uh, that's what uh, makes you happy, and that's where oxytocin is coming out. And then you you're loving, and then you hug, or you you giving half, a high five, and then you you feel a part of the you know of a group. That's that's so much 
intense uh, emotionally when you know that you have on your right and on your left somebody to help you and go out there. In tennis, it's even, even, in, even harder because it's an individual sport. You have so much mental preparation of being calm and seeing that ball going, hitting inside that court and not outside. You know, visualizing what is the next step. It's, it's a lot over here. It's the inner game. It's over here. Coach, uh, great episode. Thank you a lot for your right, time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have anything else to add before we were done? No, let's let's stay healthy and, and let's 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 live in peace. That's what I'm I'm, I'm keen of and and kids to have a um, childhood, but to to keep dreaming and you know uh, humanity can can achieve so many good things. Let's let's actually you as a journalist and with this podcast. Advertise the, the 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 positive things out there. I'm not saying always the the, the just uh, the good things that is sunny days and it's so beautiful days. No, also the hardship, also the difficulties. But humanity can really um, um, help this 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 planet to you know we have a to this, to to grow and a, and we have a, a huge potential potential and, and and at the same time we have an obligation towards the young generations. That's true. Coach, yeah, thank, thank you, you a lot. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.